So there's not a lot of people here right now, but we will record this and put it on YouTube. The first game I'm going to go over is uh, one of the Blitz matches I played with uh, Martin Knowles. Yeah, he couldn't make it today, but he's also going to look at the replay here. And uh, he had a good game here and he attacked me well. Um, and he flipped the board around. Or maybe, yeah, we'll flip it around, see from my perspective. And, uh, a wing attack, but not the one he played, and there's actually a way I could have survived this game. But you'll just have to see. So, I don't, I usually play the Nimzo Indian. But I decided to try out the slaw of this game. Play C6. Of course, if he played e4, it would have been a Karakhan. I was just trying a different opening here. And he goes for this aggressive line with e4. Wasn't sure what to do, so I played e6. Seemed like it was all options, so I played it. Played f3, which, you know, the upside is it, it you know, it strengthens the center. The downside of this move is that um, it blocks your knight from playing f3 where he wants to go. And uh, also it opens up this diagonal to your king. So whenever you play f3, just make sure, make sure you're ready for those uh, ideas from black. And here, you might be able to play e5. That'd be interesting, but I would have to fall back and then be a French type of position. Put my pawns on c6. Or it normally isn't in that opening. So yeah, I, I pin the knight. And I end up trading the bishop for the knight, but um bad part about that downside is that uh, I place all my pawns on dark squares. I trade this bishop who's on a dark square. It weakens all of these. And then the pot, the bishop that's left on the board is uh, trapped for a good while. But that's just, you know. The upside is that um, he has a little bit less control over the center. I trade the bishop. The other, the other thing that's good about that is that the uh, doubles white spawns. But if he's able to just trade this double pawn, it won't matter. So before you can do that, I take on e4. So I, I give up a little bit of control of the center, but can't undouble the pawns at least. Instead of just taking back the pawn, he backs my knight. Here, looking back on this, I should have played h6. Didn't he takes e takes e f takes e h4 check. Question. So you're saying back here or further back? Okay. Thing right here. If pawn takes, pawn takes. I can play queen h4 check. That's a fork, and I can win the pawn. So he wouldn't be able to take that there. He would. He would need to develop and then not take back on e4. Play it like a gambit. Here I should just play h6 probably. But uh. Play pawn takes and it helps him develop. And I think it, I think white's a little better. After I take. Now yeah. Kind of opening up and. My bishop's still trapped. 
my knight's still on b8, so I think Kawhi has a little bit of advantage here. h6. Oops. I'm on chess base today. Um, so yeah, now this is really scary looking. Rook is lined up against the queen. But there aren't any discoveries at the moment, so I castle. And now I back for cleanup. Now he plays uh, knight f3. Isn't a great idea because, you know, the rook's already open and there's no reason to retreat the knight. Um, e2, I think. Yeah, that's a good move. It it protects the knight. Uh, if I capture, you can capture back with the queen. Got a nice position. I have three. Um, good move. Now right here, b6 is... I, the computer likes b6, and I like it as well. Um, but I, I wanted to bring my knight to the natural square. So I've played knight f6. Because sometimes I like... I like uh, Thing, the h7 square and I wasn't sure where the bishop was going yet but the bad part about this move is uh he can now jump his knight back so it's, it's a good idea because before my knight was actually more effective because when he's on d7 he was protecting wherever now he can just jump back in repeat the position I place queen e2 e6 95 so it's kind of, kind of transposition that's kind of return to the same position except uh, my knights not able to trade here no longer so that's a little worse than before, so it should be seven. Not sure about queen e3, I don't know what the goal is. Well, what is uh, playing with that move? Um, right now, c5 is an option. I didn't play it, but c5 is an option. Try to open up the bishop, uh, break up the pawns in the center. White's starting to attack me, so if I could break through the center and Trade a couple of pieces. It'd be good for me. I build up instead. I play rook eight d eight. Um. Now the queen shifts over. Spins this g pawn. Starting to line up some things. They'll probably try to double the rooks. So I I play king h eight. It may have been a little wimpy. It wasn't really threatening anything yet, and I weaken the f7 square. Comes into play later. Alright, so c5 is still an option. Play good move. I'll play king h8. Here's where things get interesting. Uh, white to move. Where do you think? Where do you think he went? I'll flip, I'll flip it around. All right, so now you're playing as Martin. White to move. Okay, 
he played a uh, was spec a uh, interesting move. I don't know if it's a uh, down or not, but he played a uh, rook takes f six, which is yeah, fun way to play in a blitz game. Except the exchange. In return, he gets day one rook into the game. So it's not unsound. It's not. Might be a little bit unsound. But it's not unsound to the point you can't play him even in a blitz game. It's, I think it's an effective move to play. All right. So I start. I start getting a little panicky here. Uh, I play. Uh, Seven. I forget what the computer said. I should have played instead of Queen Seven. But anyway, um, now it's white to move again. Plays another surprising move. There's a couple of interesting moves here actually. Look at for a minute. See. Um, any combinations or anything here? I think I'll stop it here for about 30 seconds. All right, now this move move doesn't isn't sound exactly, but uh, I thought it was really creative, very cool looking. Play queen to g6. And this moves this moves pretty out there, <laughs> but it's it's a cool looking move. Um, come back to this in a minute. I'll show you another move that. Probably uh, bears white a little bit. But yeah, um, we're threatening mate. The only way to prevent mate is to take the queen. But when we take the queen, there's a knight fork here. And if, you know, I played king to h7, um, I played king to g8. I lose the rook too. Uh, variation. You take the queen anyway. And now our king can't go here. I go back to h8 and then picks up the rook as well. That's no good. I play king h7. The knight takes. Now I think we're both getting low on time now. So at the end of these, some of these games are. Well, these games are going over a blitz game, so at the end the accuracy might be down a little bit. Right here, um, if I play king, I play king h8. Right, I thought my king was stuck. I forgot that I could play pawn to g6. Now this looks like it doesn't do anything, but. It does a lot actually. Um, if if he takes here, my king can just step out of the check now. More, no more material lost. Um, takes here. I think the simplest way to save this position is to uh, take with check. Then just step out g7 and like something exchange, be very, very, uh, winnable game for him. All right, I didn't do that and I played knight g6 and then the game, yeah, went down the tubes. And here's like that's a good finishing move, um. 
So yeah, he, he could just take twice there. And then uh, it'll be a bishop in game. Let's say he took once. I can't take this. I, mean, I take it. And then boom. Bishop to h7. Deflection move. Deflecting the king away from the rook. And he gets my rook. And I went to an end game. Where, you know, the, the rook just dominates the bishop. I think we're running out of time here. That was an interesting game. Go back to this move. The queen g6 is what he played. And it's definitely the coolest looking move, but the more effective move was as Starcraft uh, has mentioned, Rick takes f7. So we've it's the same idea using this fork. Queen can't take, obviously, because the knight will take the queen. And if Rick takes, we have the fork. But still, um, I gave him an ex gave up an exchange. So in this case, he can take the rook and the knight, and he's you know he's almost square with white here. Um, yeah, this would be an interesting game to play out here. But it would sl it would slightly favor white maybe. But I guess it would be whoever played better at this point. Queen would be able to uh, round pretty freely. Rooks have to coordinate with each other. Uh, King doesn't look to, like he's that safe. So I, I think I think it'd be a struggle. All right, let's go to another game. Let's go to one that I won. Yes, Martin. Yeah, this is a uh, put the board around. The reason I looked, uh, yeah, I wanted to show the other game from his perspective because of those cool uh, sacrifices. So yeah, I'm, I'm playing black. This is just a, a standard Sicilian. This was uh, back in December. Yeah, this is Simonov Sicilian trying to play. So he plays a sideline. He plays knight b5. I see a lot. And uh, that's why I move the knight to c6 first. I want this b8 square open. He's saying to hide. And uh, I move the queen back to uh, d8. It's trouble for me because he plays knight to d6 check. I need my queen watching the square. And I also need the queen watching the e5 square. Because another another move potentially would be uh, if it gets upon the e5, that could be trouble too. Queen b8, and it looks like we're wasting a tempo, but we have to move the knight back as soon as we attack it. With pawn to a6, not that bad. Now I'll play knight f6 because uh, there's a line right here where if I play a6, and move the bishop here and give up the uh, give up the knight. We get some crazy stuff where he's threatening to play bishop here and win my queen and anyway it's it's a mess. And uh see here. Yes, and it goes something like this, I think. Yeah. Check. And here. Right here. And you end up trading the queen for three minor pieces. 
uh, white can play queen eight, queen g4. This gets pretty wild. So I like to have my knight on f6 before this happens. So I play knight f6. He doesn't have this queen g4 move at the end of the uh, combination. So he could probably still try it, but this is a little different. A6 now, so he could he could play B6. It'd be not as bad as the other one. For me now B5, threatening to play a pawn fork against the knights here. This is another blitz game, by the way. It's another short short one. Um, Yeah, I, I don't think he, he wasn't quite thinking about this palm fork. He had to take a step backwards, relocate the knight. And what else can he do? I guess he can play the other knight to b1 and then d2. Something like that. Boy, he's playing it. I guess uh, if you want to get this knight back in the game, you have to go to c2. Maybe c3 later and then knight c2. F4, of course, is a. Or, yeah, it's a good square for a knight. It's almost always a good idea to have a knight on f4 or knight f5. One thing I don't like about this is that the uh, knight's under attack by the queen on b8. At some point, like bishop to d6 could be a good idea. But yeah, I play d6. Stabilize the center. Also, I like to I like to play pawn to d5, and this knight is watching d5 right now. Although I guess on his normal square, he's doing that anyway, isn't he? So I, just, I get ready to castle. I don't know that I'm, you know, going to castle anytime soon, but I just want to be ready to castle. Now this bishop is okay, but it is blocking queen from seeing uh, d5, so that makes it easier for me to play it. In c7, just to Get the rook ready to play. All right, here I play rook c8, which is not a terrible move. It's fine. That's why I move the queen, so I move the rook. But uh, playing knight to e5 now is a good idea. To blockade this, blockade the pawn, and it uncovers the. Uh, wait a minute. Chris Cashman, thanks for the follow. So knight to e5, um, it unblocks the bishop, and it uh, the d5 is possible now, and also uh, this knight blockades the e5 pawn. Then the Sicilian, any variations you try to play d5, break in the center, and that it really helps you equalize the game. And uh, one thing I always have to look out for is can white play e5. In this position you can't play e5, but you know it's gonna be a good idea. So I don't do that. I play rook c8. I I see, I see the plan, but I play a move later. But still okay. Castles. So yeah, in the Sicilian, if you give black a couple of extra moves, it's going to be equal. Or he's going to have some advantage. I'll play d5 now. 
And now white doesn't have a pawn center. So yeah, the, the pressure's off. Now it's just an even game. Knight c4. I grabbed the bishop, but that's that's not right. I analyzed this last night. Um, well, for one thing, look what happens if you try to try to just grab this pawn. Bad idea, because white can play. Uh, is that right? Yeah, no, he, he takes here. Place here. And it's just, I don't know. This bishop is well placed, I think. It's okay for white. Maybe he could play this knight instead. I don't know. And then another thing is, uh, I'm going to take the initiative here, so. This should be a d6. So this does two things. It attacks the pawn. And it also covers the f7 square. Now when he blocks. In trade bishops. Take the pawn on b2. The queen is not guarding its checkmate. This is the line that look, look good. I grab I grab the bishop instead. Castle. What's the other move? Was it takes here? Oh yeah, yeah, I know, I know, this is a bad move, um, so he's, he's attacking me twice here on d5. So I castled, and drops a pawn. Now you might be wondering why I played this move. Well, I was thinking that he was going to play knight takes d5. Pawn takes. And then uh, we're we're threatening to send the queen with the bishop, and the not the bishop the other bishop still under attack. So that's what I visualized. That's why I castled. What I did notice is that he could take the bishop first, and then that just drops a pawn. That's what happened in the game. Yeah, it's one of those blitz things. If you sat for a long time and all about that, maybe you would have noticed that, but. Here, instead of moving the queen, I just pin his queen and trade. Here's where things get interesting. Here, white definitely has an advantage, but uh, I slowly push back the rooks. And uh, capturing the rook does nothing, right? Let's just put another rook. Um, let's recapture and then instead of contesting the uh, sixth row, it'll just belong to him. So I don't take. Move my king up a little bit. Because for one thing, he's now threatening mate. Get check here. If I capture, he recaptures and it's back row checkmate. So move my king over. And then instead of. Uh, now I decide just to give up the back row. This way I can defend the sixth row and 
seventh one and bring my king up. I think one thing he could try was would be what like uh take take then rook here. That looks pretty good. Your rook's gonna have to be really passive and go to a seven. And uh, I'm a pawn down. That's looking kind of bad for me. He moves his king up instead. And now I get, now I get a move. Uh, I can play a king to uh, seven. Now I look at this again with fresh eyes. Maybe I should take here. I don't know. I'm either going to have a passive rook or I'm going to have a King trapped on the 8th rank. So I'm still not in good shape here. But he backs up. Or he checks me, rather. And I'm okay. Now my king is watching both of these squares. So I'm defended now. It's just a matter of trying to make some progress. Now I think he's just trying to get behind my king. With two rooks back here. I play a move, I don't know if it's a mouse slip or if I was just running out of time. I play rook f6. They're both down under half a minute at this point. So it's going to get a lot less accurate. But yeah, rook f6 doesn't do anything. Move it back. Sometimes I'm trying just not to make a, a mistake. If I'm not sure where exactly I want my pawns, better off not moving them. I was just kind of sort of a waiting move, I guess. You have to defend the pawn. Now I move my pawn some more. I decide to go for this h5 structure. Good. It's a good. It's like a safe structure to have. A rook in game or a queen in game. I move the king up. And now he's, he's made a few too many uh, pawn moves. And now I actually get really powerful e file. So now all of a sudden, all of a sudden I went from being worse to a lot better here. Even though I'm down a pawn, my rooks are a lot more active. This, uh, Check on uh, a E2 is going to be a pain to deal with. All right, now um, I plays rook to B8, which ends up being a uh, it's a pretty big mistake actually. Um, white to move. I'm going to leave it here for about uh about a minute or thirty seconds. Uh, yeah, just look for. Look for a few moves, and uh, if any suggestions, let me know. All right, well, this is a move. I'll, I'll show you what happened in the game first. I played rook to e2. We're both under 20 seconds now. Move this king up. I grab the pawn. And I think he could take here with check. He just didn't see that. I take the pawn, and now notice if he takes, 
fix this way. Get this check in. And then it's uh, tough for him to defend. I could play something like rook to h2. It's almost checkmate. In fact, it might be forced mate after this. He has to play here. My king up, and then it's forced mate. Rook to h2. Pretty rather. He takes back with the H pawn to prevent that. I take an A2 and then I'm just, you know, it's a self mate. F4 and I get the uh, check in here and uh, time ran out, but it was mating one. The H4 and then rook to H2. That's, that's how the game ended, but uh, much cooler move back here was king to g4 and it's just completely uh the wrong square <laughs> king <to> g5 <laughs> and the position's just absolutely winning for black now let me an example break to d8 and now it's forced mate. Rook to e2 check. Can't play king to g3 because the king's up here now. Plays king g3. We get h5, h4 checkmate. So he, mo he can move his king back. Then I would have uh, rook to e1 check. And then bring up the other rook, and it ends up on g3 anyway, on h4 mate. And I think there's no way out of this. So it, it looks like innocent move, sort of, king g5, but it's actually a backbreaker. It, it was like plus 7 or 6 in the uh, computer evaluation. Yeah, that's that an interesting game. What game do I want to go over next? Um, Okay, um, let's go over this short game played by, uh, playonsys.com. It was submitted by White. We're going to look at, look at it from his side. I think he'll probably watch this on YouTube later. So, um, he ends up playing a London system. But it turns very aggressive in the middle of the game. I think you'll like it. It's just developing. Doing a normal setup. Now, a lot of times, uh, if I was playing black here, I'd like to play c5. I prefer that to knight c6. I don't want to block this pawn. Now this is a little bit of a problem. Uh, Queen's blocked from defending d5. Be an issue later. Not really sure what the plans are for this bishop on d7. Now here taking with the bishop is fine, but I was thinking maybe with the pawn. 
because the knight's not really going to have anywhere to go to. With this bishop being on d7, on six is kind of interesting. He'd like to go here. But he has to end up going all the way back. Knight can't go here because the queen can take it. And going here is a bad idea because uh, pawn is just way too weak. Maybe he can play bishop c6. Maybe. But yeah, this pawn can be a target later. So anyway, castle. Sorry. Yeah, here we are. 95, knight takes. But bishop takes is fine as well. Might be a little simpler. Castles. The castling, you don't want to take lightly. You don't always want to just automatically castle. Um, white has not committed to castling. So, um, castle too early on the side of the board where you're going as an advantage, you could just get attacked. Castling can actually be detriment if you do it at the wrong time. That seems like a pretty automatic move here. Plays there. D3. I play c6. Um, white isn't attacking d5. It doesn't need to be reinforced right now. And this bishop has already played d7. If the bishop was still back here, maybe you could make an argument for playing e6 and d7 or something like that. Yeah, c6. Not as aggressive, I think. I don't think black can make much progress on the king side. Yep. Uh, push on the queen side, and so I like pawn at c5 better. At least the bishop open, and it pressures the center a little bit. And once you open this file, you can either rook to c8. Why tax with G4? Then you can castle queen side or... I like this aggressive play. H6 looks like it's slowing white down. It actually speeds up the attack. Now, now H6 is a hard point. He's already committed to the shape of the pawn structure. Now white knows if you can get a pawn here and capture here. You can open up Black's King for sure. Pawn was still on h6. Might be able to get through, but um can take a little longer. I think White could play his queen to c2 and threaten this pawn. You have to move it up anyway. But h6 does help you open up the king. F4 is a mistake though, because um, from all these lines, your bishop gets trapped. And you'll see, see what happens. Um, knight, knight E4. And uh, Good line to show you. Um, right here, yeah. What happened to the game? Knight takes. Pawn takes. The bishop's under attack. Gets to capture. And now this, yeah, you know, this bishop's trapped. And in the game it works out, but you could have accomplished the same thing without trapping your bishop. You know, the idea of f4 is to pair g5. But if you play h4 instead back here, play h4 instead, you have all the advantages of being able to play g5. So your bishop can run away in some lines if he needs to. 
Also, you want to open up the H file. And if you play G5, there's a possibility it might take you. And when you take back, you'll open up your rook. So for that reason, H4 is a little bit better, I think. Not to mention that it opens up your king a little bit less. When you play F4, you might, you might get checked on this diagonal at some point. Now here, it's possible to take with the bishop first. What happened in the game was he took with the knight, and took back with the pawn, and then the bishop's under attack, and this bishop trapped. But if you take with the bishop first, he takes back. There's nobody under attack right now, and you can just play. You can play g5, and it gets real interesting after this. Open up the file. Check the king. And uh, you lose your bishop. Your down material. But. King's all the way opened up. The knight might be able to jump in soon. And yeah. White has a lot of potential for a checkmate attack here. And this pawn on e6 is weak. He has compensation for the pawn. The uh, beast. But I like to have concrete lines before I sacrifice something. A little bit materialistic. Go back here. And also he takes back of the bishop. White can play four. And now there's, you know, all sorts of ways white can attack. He can go queen side and bring the rook to d1. Attacking. Knight can jump into e4. Lots of ways. Go back to the game though. Bishop got trapped. And uh, white played g5. He's gonna lose the bishop. He wants to make sure the king is opened. So instead of taking back in the center, concentrates on opening the king, which once you're down material, that's what you have to do. Go right for the king. And now, uh, on takes d6, on takes h6 is actually a losing move. So back here, after g takes, um, One, one idea would be to play bishop to h4, check the king, and make it where he can't castle. This isn't a big victory, but it's something. And then after this, you actually play g5. Which looks weird because you're making this a pass pawn now, but, but the only defender black has right now is white's h6 pawn so you use the attacker against white and the block the uh block the rooks and the queen into your king yeah you can do you can do that sometimes you can use your bonus pieces for your own defense rook g1 sorry here took the pawn open the file up now rook to g1. King to f7. And now it's it's forced mate. An h5 check. The only move he has is uh king f6. Then queen to g6 is mate. That's how it ended. But um what else can you try? If he goes king to h8, queen flies into h5, and threatens checkmate. There's no real way for him to defend it. So he plays rook f6. Just to hold on to everything. Well, then you can just take with the d-pawn. And this rook is out of squares. But yeah, I thought that was an interesting game.
see, I'm going to go over a couple more games here. Go this game first. This is uh, another. I'm not going to worry about the opening too much here. But I do like to play mainline things more, more often. I mean, I like to play E4 or D4. Sidelines can work, but you have to be careful the ones you play. So we sort of have uh, King's Indian attack, pawn center here. Yeah, if uh, black takes here, there might be a queen exchange. And black's doing fine here. I think he could even play e5 or those knights out. Now, um, yeah, you could play bishop to h4 maybe. One thing I don't like is the bishop being trapped behind these pawns here. Now, now in taking, um, black gains a little bit of space. So I, I will leave the pawns like this for now and just my knight out maybe. Remove the queen to get ready to castle the queen side. Um, when we capture, we lose our fourth rank pawn. And black gains a, gains a fourth. Hold on a second. I'm mistaken here. Pawn just drops. Right? Fine. So I have an uncomfortable pin going on. That's a good counter move by black. Right now I think you might need to play Queen D2. The way the game played out, this knight really got in the way of you castling. Um, do what else could we do? Yeah, you have to be careful. He's about to take care on C2, 3, and then uh, the fork at the end of, the, end of that combo. So, Knight G2 defends that. Yeah, I think queen here first, then knight f3, bishop to e2, and then castle. I'll be a little safer. Takes the pawn back, and because the knight's pinned, he can't capture. And now it's actually turning out to be okay. And right here, you desperately need to take with the knight. Take with the knight that allows your bishop to move here, and you can castle before he traps your king. By taking with the pawn, your development is still a bit slow, and you're risking a rook getting to e8. Castles. And now, this is kind of an open area. It's not really a a tight palm formation. It's not really a safe place to castle. Castle on king's side is what I might need to do probably. But uh now here um Bishop's really irritating. I'm gonna try to get rid of it. I think you have to play h three. And if the bishop backs up play g four. Might be seem a little bit extreme but that's my that might be what you to do. Um but F four uh it doesn't force the bishop back, right? Moving your bishop from your pawn from a dark square, another dark square. 
They're taking away the possibility of playing this move. F3 might be uh, be another move you need to play. Wait, but yeah, with F4, now let's the bishop just stay there. Now we get the knight pinned. I hear, uh, without much thinking, black should play H5, A5 right now. If white takes this, then it's, white takes this, then, you know, king is just wide open to attack. We couldn't do that. I think you would have to, uh, might have to push the pawn instead. Then you get another problem. Get this pawn ready to queen in three moves. Right? The black should do, I think. Play b6. H4 again. We can't we can't attack the bishop that way. Um, that was a surprising move. Black plays g5. Black needs to finish his development. Do this knight or play a5. E5 actually helps white open the position up, give him some options. Counterattack. That's looking kind of scary for white still. But, uh, I think with this move, he, he'll be okay. He can play rook e1 or something like that. He goes for the attack. That looks like he's dropped a piece, right? He had two defenders, like had three attackers. That's not really the case. Uh, white can play. One move the computer suggested. Rook to e1. This bishop is pinned to the rook, and it's pinned to the queen. It can't go anywhere. You actually, just win the piece back. Fine. Uh, G takes F7 is also good. I think it's like forced mate in 13 moves or something like that. <laughs> One thing I was looking at here that didn't work was playing uh, Rook to H8, right? Thinking, oh, I can get the queen here. And then it's going to be mate after I go here. And here, and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I like stopping that. <laughs> Just takes your queen. That didn't work, but that's what I was looking at. The analysis. Another idea would be to play queen h6 immediately. That's not, it's just not quite mate. You can escape it. Oh. What stops this idea in his tracks is uh, queen to e3 check, forcing the queen trade, and you're not mate. <laughs> so g takes is that's the best move. Takes, and here we still have what still play here, I believe. Those rook technically isn't. This isn't pinned to the rook technically anymore, but. Oh, I know. It's still pinned to the queen. So this move is, still works. Queen is stopping the bishop from moving. Now it's turning, turning a pin on the queen. There's also some lines where you play rook to h7. The queen and the rook uh, leave a checkmate. 
back with some. But I think it's too risky to try that without seeing all the moves, so I think returning the material is good. But yeah, I'd play Ricky one to do that. We go. Check. Now the queen gets out with a check. And now he steps into the viewer F7, and it's uh, pretty much over from here. Now, here I think White Pike was a little on time and just didn't move quickly enough. But if you if you look at this move, it's uh leaving uh you open to another attack uh queen to e3 checks the king and runs the rook so it would have been over anyway I'll, i had some analysis on this yesterday somewhere i lost the notes the beer erased it somehow but there was there was like a checkmate in 13 somewhere back here Starts with Rook here. I can't. I can't remember. I'll. I'll, I'll look it up for next time. Jokes. So, good. That good game. Thanks for uh, let me go over your games. I've got one more here. More game that will wrap things up. This is the uh, the uh, player named Lou, and he he had a. This is on another website. This is one game not played on Chess.com. Play on another site, so brains are a little are a little inflated. Start off with a uh, Four Knights game. And now uh, the main move is Bishop to B5. That makes a little bit of a mistake. He plays D4. And now Black can play a trap here. Play. Hi, Elfish B. How are you, man? So there's a little bit of a mistake because Black can play. Knight takes pawn. And we get this well known trap where Black can play d5. And White White's still in the game, but Black's a little bit better. But the trap is worth it. Black to play. So yeah, that, so he plays d4 instead. So he doesn't punish White. White castles. And now that, that sort of trap I don't think works as well. Because you might walk into his pins. Get it again here. Here. I'm not so sure it works as well anymore. Like this. Like that should be okay for white. Anyway, anyway, he plays h5. Now we already know his plan is to attack on h file. Okay, uh, they play. Uh, he didn't castle. He waited for you to castle. Now he's gonna try to open the h file and 
Let's really be on the lookout for that. And one, so he played, he plays d3. One thing you have to look out for when you play d3 is that bishop can't return home. So you have to be especially wary of having a pin here. And also, um, we play h5, it weakens the g5 square. This pawn is back here, and if your knight or bishop jumps in, you can play h6 and chase you away. So, white should take advantage of that. And he does here, he plays bishop g5, and there's no way to get rid of this bishop right now. The well, bad part is, like has his pin, and uh, on h3, I'm not sure if that does anything or not. I think Blake just let that sit there. Like some other move like this. No, not there. See, like here, for example. Now, if uh, white takes his pawn, oh wait, there's a pin here. Anyway, you get in a position like this, the knight gets chased away, and this, this is pretty dangerous for your king. Thankfully, right here, the uh, queen can't get over here right now, so might be okay. That's kind of that's the kind of sacrifice you'd be looking out for. So he steps out of the pin, which is natural, but the only problem is you can open up the king now. He plays bishop takes f3. Now usually you don't have to worry about double pawns. Right here, the king's in a little bit of trouble. I was just saying the ratings are slightly different because the game wasn't played on chess.com. Chess.com's ratings are, uh, are are somewhat lower, so a lot of other websites give you a higher rating for the same skill level. Um, yeah, we get we get these double pawns. Uh, there's open file to the king now. These pawns are blocking each other. And that's that's going to make it difficult for White to use his queen. Get over here to help. And uh, same thing with the knight and the bishop. And with a pawn. Without a pawn on g3, there's nobody to uh, check the f4 square. Black already has a pawn. Stacking that square, so be dangerous if he gets a knight here. And overall, it's just hard to, to defend. This h pawn is by himself, and they, these guys can't defend each other. But there's no there's no rook on the open file right now. H four, um, a white just made a mistake. We all do, we all we all make mistakes. Play bishop takes h4. You're getting that the rook can capture back. But, it, but he keeps playing and things turn around for him and he, he almost won this game. Yep, Anon is, uh, that's not, yeah, it just means anonymous to the, uh, They didn't want they didn't want their names on the the game, so three names on the game, so H seven. So 
So uh so White's behind. He doesn't wanna he doesn't want to trade Queens right now, so he backs up. I'll make sure I didn't miss something. I remember now. I think right here, black can play knight to d4. And if uh, white takes the rook, the fork here on f3. And all these lines, you'll see knight d4 is a good move. So he doesn't do that. And white pins the knight. Black offers a queen trade and white declines. Then tries to trade queens again and he backs up. Now again, knight to e, knight to d4 is a really painful move here for white. Making a couple of threats. Um, one of the threats is to take out this knight on c3, who's protecting the bishop, and you can win the bishop. And if uh, white, you know. Takes here and then plays like plays a move like this. Black can capture here, and the the queen is overloaded. He takes here, and then a mate. In fact, I think this pattern comes up in just a second. And if uh. King moves over, we get a, a really cool checkmate in the corner. Backing the queen, playing rook takes. Now, now, now Black sees this idea. Plays knight d4. And melee right here, boom. Black should play uh, knight takes f3. Made in three moves. That same checkmate pattern we saw a second ago. Didn't see that he plays rook b8. White tries to get some sort of plan going. Tries to get his knight over there to help. Drops a palm though. At least now White has an open file with the rook, so. Not much, but something. Of course, now he's turning to the play at checkmate again. Here you can play knight takes f3, right? It's still waiting there. For him. But he doesn't see that. He plays knight e2. And he just grabs a rook. He didn't see the forced mate. And now uh, black slips up. Moves his king up. And uh, this is why he's going to have a centralized knight. And uh, he has this weak square on f5 and forgot about it. And white grabs the queen. Now, really, just a couple of really good moves here. White. Go and look at it for a second. There's a couple of ways here to uh, get an attack going. One way is to uh, check for king. Okay. 
One way is to check the king and do uh force him on dark square. Like here. Then you can win the rook. But that doesn't quite work here because black could play king to f6 instead. So that doesn't quite work, so let's reverse the move order. Play queen here first. And if he defends the rook, so he brings this guy over. You have a maiden one, bishop d5. So his king's how far up? He's sort of in the middle of the board now. And uh, there's tactics like this you have to look out for. And yeah, queen to queen g5 is just really winning for white. Because you're threatening this checkmate and you're threatening the rook over here. Hard to see though. I don't feel bad about it. Okay. Now there's some other ideas you can try. Maybe this is the game with the long checkmate, actually. Because you could take the knight to deflect him away from this pawn. You can capture here. Actually, you might be able to win this that position. But it's, it's sort of maybe you should be looking for. And white plays an incredible move here in a second. Okay, at this point, um, what white should think about doing is simply playing bishop to d5. And team up on this f7 pawn. This rook is kind of busy right now. He can't really do anything. Bishop is free. If the bishop wants to coordinate with the queen, it has to be on white square because bishop cannot affect dark squares. So the weakest uh, white square here is f7. Queen's already looking at it. So bishop here check forces the king back, and then you capture here. Hopefully, start some sort of attack from that position. And here, uh, White loses, but this move right here is actually very good. Computer loves this move. Rook g6. But we have to see a follow up here. And this bishop's under attack. Go ahead and look at this position for one second. I'll let you think and uh think of the move that wins by force. Of course, this pawn can't capture the rook. It's pinned. So I guess you could move the bishop, but then you have to worry about rook takes h2. But it has to be a check. So, queen to f6, check. And if the king moves back e8, runs into moves like this, check, check, d5, 
keep him in check the whole time. Check. <laughs> And then if he plays here, you have fork on the bishop. So you either get checkmate or you can't really win the bishop though because he's going to start checking you here. Probably escape the checks, I'm not sure though. But yeah, this is the position where it said it was force checkmate and back here it said force checkmate and 13 moves. Can't go there. And if he goes goes to uh, D7, then get this move in. When he's protected by the rook. The only way, only place you can go back to is uh, e8, and then you get this check. Get this check. He has to block it, so that way, you can avoid check, and then uh, yeah, mate and two check. You get like a whole checkmate sequence while your rook is in danger and king's about to get. Potentially checkmate or checked against. Um, so yeah, it's a good idea. Just uh, it's a good idea. Just didn't quite see the queen f6 idea. And uh, Charles rook back to defend and lost the bishop. And here it's just hard for hard for white to do much. Like has too many pieces. Queen's the most powerful piece, but uh like has pawns. He has a rook, a knight, and a bishop for the queen. That's hard for him to fight on here. Queen can't do everything on its own. So yeah, the game kind of took a turn here and uh, black one, but I did a good job hanging on. Saw that he saw that fork, took advantage of that. They played rook g6. It was a good move. Just didn't see the follow up to finish finish the attack. I thought it was, I thought it was a good game. I thought it was interesting. Hello, Mr. Lance. We went over one of your games a minute ago, um, but I have another one we can go over. But you can make it. I'll be posting the, uh, be posting the full video on YouTube uh, tomorrow. So D4, H5. Where are these H5 players coming from? White takes the center, which is always a good idea. And right here, I'd like, uh, move I would like to play is pawn takes, pawn, and queen takes. And then I would treat this like a Scandinavian defense. I would either chase the queen with the knight. Or I'd play C4. Take care, take care, Elfers B. See you next time, man. Uh, C4, protect for queen, or uh, play knight F3 first. In the game, uh, game you played knight C3, which is fine, but I think uh, taking would be a little more aggressive. Plays knight f6, which pressures your pawn. You got to do something about it. You need to uh, defend it or play e5. 
Five might be good. There's not a lot of good places for the knight. Or you could take here on d5. But this way he kind of gets uh gets more play than he should, I think. The uh the trade knights. You're down you're down pawn. Um probably get it back, but um F six is a uh, I don't like I don't like this move very much by Black. Um, problems he, the problem is he he can't play e6. I don't know if he wants to castle the king side or not. Maybe he should just move his knight out and his bishop and then try to castle queen side. Yeah, this f6 move is dangerous because it weakens all these light squares around the king. I think if White gets queen here. I'll be in a lot of trouble. So he attacks the bishop. And now I like I like this move ninety two. Clever way of developing the knight. Go to F four. Go G three. Or you can go over here to the queen side, so it's a it's a good move to play, I think. Now A five, that's that's too many pawn moves. Black needs to develop. Falling behind here. Alright, so this bishop's still cutting in the uh, light squares, and uh, you can eliminate this bishop. The, the light squares for black will be even, even weaker. The g6. Another pawn move, right? Yeah, and he's allowing you to take this, and right here would be really effective to do that. Castling is okay. That's, that's what happened. Um, now one thing about castling is Black has already committed three pawn moves into uh, attacking the king side, but there's no target here yet. You haven't castled. King's in the center. So if you play, if you play like a queen up and. You could make a queen side or whatever, but when you castle, it's making his nonsensical moves make sense here, right? So there is a target here now, so these these uh, bad moves weren't so bad anymore. So right here, though, um, what you do is take this knight, take the bishop with your knight. I mean, and when that happens. These, this pawn can't defend this one. And uh, so you still have this nice diagonal, all these weak squares. Uh, this square is weak. And so is this one. And this pawn is isolated. So it's a really bad pawn structure. And you could play bishop to e6. And now this bishop is it's blocking this pawn. It's attacking this pawn. It's it's cutting off the black king from going to the king's side or the queen's side. And uh, you play h4 to stop this pawn. And you put your bishop here on f4 on another weak square. So this all looks really good for you. And you can play like on the c4 and on the d5. And it'll be really difficult to get rid of this bishop. That's the big point I got for this game. I analyzed it. This is the this is the uh, move for I thought things could really turn around for for you. So black finally moves his knight on the queen side. I still need to figure out what to do with the bishop. All right, so you're threatening to win the knight by playing e5. But the problem is he's already attacking your knight. What you could do instead is remove the threat on your knight by exchanging it. So it's not, you know, 
sort of, sort of a small, a fine point, but very important. Um, take the knight, take the bishop, I mean. He takes back. His knight's still sitting here. You've traded away your, your problem. You had a knight under attack, and you exchanged it for a piece that was worth the same amount. And there's a move you want to play anyway. And then, and then, after he recaptures, you have this uh, pin to work with, and you can win the knight. Now, usually to counter a move like this, Black would like to be able to play pawn to h a7 to pawn to a6, and threaten your bishop in return. Maybe get some sort of counterattack. But yeah, this pawn's already moved. This is a weak square, and he can't get rid of your bishop, man. Could just win some material there. So instead, your opponent plays bishop to d7. What he should do is, uh, I believe what you should do is just take on g3. And then uh, take here. Might be able to play like on takes h2. Then uh, maybe even just b6 here. like that because you know if you if you take this guy um if black takes this guy then uh takes back and it's a fork on the rook and the king changing is fine Okay, now one second here. Problem with exchanging here is, I guess, uh, it mobilizes the queen. More of a problem than it looked like at first. I had an alternative move. I'm trying to remember what it was. Right here. Oh, this is it right here. Yeah, what I was saying, uh, now right here you should take the knight. And here, your knight's under attack and your bishop is as well. So I was saying maybe, maybe you take with the knight instead. And then, uh, that he takes you back. Play your knight to c5 and, uh, play your rook to e1. And this would be this would be a better way to play probably, because the the way the way the game happened, knight takes e4, ended up opening up his queen, takes a fall on lance. So, but this way it mobilized the queen, and allowed her to enter the game, which is it's it's hard it's difficult to see in the. A fast game like this. And now, um, this is getting difficult to defend. Play pawn, knight takes pawn. And that, you know, that's happening all the way across the board in another area. And, uh, it's hard to know what move to play here. But yeah, I, I move over here. Like, doesn't care about this pawn. Because it's not near the attack. And now, uh, 
Spike plays a really good move here. I'm going to stop this for a second. Um, go ahead and type in some ideas if you have any. Obviously, Lance knows the next move here. He was in the game, but... Flip the board around. Excuse me. So queen here, queen here doesn't do anything. Just takes the queen. Knight takes back. Then let's let's back up again. Uh, knight check doesn't do anything. This pawn is blocking black's rook, so knight move doesn't do anything. He just moves over, and uh, yeah, there's nothing going on. But black played excellent move plays queen to e4 you're thinking oh well that doesn't work you can just play f3 now well f3 leaves the bishop undefended and black can just take that's what happened in the game but if he doesn't play this move then you know black's gonna play queen to g checkmate there's nothing nothing that can be done now that's just a interesting game. Then uh, that tactic just happened. Not sure there's much much what I can do now. And now this this rook is pinned, so he can take on f3 here in a second. That's hard to see with the pin there, but um, trying to trade the queens. Get a little bit of safety, see if he can win a piece and get back in the game later. But White, Black had this other move. Knight takes f3, and it's just, that's just really nothing you can do here. I thought it was an instructive and interesting game. What games have I not? I might save my I might save my other game. Oh I know what. I promised Martin I would go over. Game. I already went over that one. Remember this one as well. Wow, we really covered a lot of ground today. I think we looked at all the games I had on here. Great, okay. Thanks, thanks. Thank everyone for watching. Um, I'll post this on YouTube in a, in a day or so. Yeah, thank, thank I gotta go too. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for follow Lance. Um, I'll see everybody later, and I will post this on YouTube in about a day's time. All right, thank you, and uh, we'll be back next week. Tell your friends. All right, goodbye.